graduates, esteemed faculty and staff, parents, siblings, friends, family, and those of you who just wound up with this video in your spam folder, good time of day, and congratulations to HIU's graduating class of 2020. When I got the call from Dr. Edgington about giving this speech today, I made a firm vow to accurately represent this graduating body. I really tried to take on the discipline and focus of the students laboring over Brown, Guthrie, and Kummel in order to cram out the rest of their exegetical. And so, like so many of you, around 11 o'clock last night I started. I must also stress that I did not expect to be the commencement speaker. I, who completed a degree in English literature, would now be equipped to find a steady career in fiction if I lived during any of the years between 1500 and 1860. I'm thus called upon to address and dispense relevant wisdom to this year's class. So in preparation for today's speech, I decided to do some research, and like most others graduating today, I made the executive decision to bypass ProQuest, Gale, JSTOR, and ATLA for the ever more reputable Google search bar. Under the search most inspirational quote of all time, I found the top result, the number one ranked piece of advice from success.com. Keep your face always toward the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Graduates, I'm here today to inform you that this is not only horribly cliche, but also an awful piece of advice. Although you are now the recipient of a traditional undergraduate degree, I see it fit to stress that if you keep your face always toward the sun, you will go blind and become as entirely sunburnt as Tyler Green at Spring Fever Day 2019. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, consider yourself lucky. I've never seen a human being achieve such a disturbing shade of red. Inevitably, however, all commencement speeches must arrive at some semblance of genuine wisdom. And so I open God's word. The prophet Habakkuk, upon understanding the imminent destruction and subjugation of his people at the hands of the ruthless Babylonians, argued with God and cited many grievances. Even so, in the face of dire calamity and hopelessness, Habakkuk managed to gain something that we, the class of 2020, have been forced to gain over the course of the turbulent last six months, perspective. He concludes his book, his poem, with this. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, Though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in stalls, yet, even so, I will rejoice in the Lord, I will exult in the God of my salvation. Thirty years from now, how will you be remembered? You, the graduating class of 2020, will forever be inextricably linked to this year. And while 2020 may go down as one of the worst years in recent history, I guarantee you this. If you work hard, be kind, show love, and learn to persevere through the difficulties of life, as you already have, you will show the world that there is good to come of 2020 yet. See, we're not called to step out into the world, into an uncertain workforce, a precarious health landscape, and a chaotic political scene to slap band-aids on all the cracks that we see. No. If anything, class of 2020, we have learned what it takes to persevere, to push through our trials and transcend our perceived limitations in order to create a new way of being and living, a new normal. So listen up, 2020, it's not over yet. And I'm not trying to jinx anything, scout's honor. Okay, I was never actually a scout and the closest thing I've come to being one is a red box with tagalongs written on the side. But I mean this wholeheartedly, 2020 is not over yet. There may be more hurt, more pain, more trials, more disease, more famine, and a million other things that could go wrong. But if we live our lives confined to the trap of what if, then we will have let 2020 win. Instead, let us conserve and focus our energy on living out even so's. Even if all of those things happen, even if the fig tree does not blossom, we have a chance to go out into our world, into our communities, into our home lives, and a billion other capacities and affect positive change. Well, as soon as we're able to physically. For now, that change begins in a virtual remote platform but it is a platform nonetheless. You know, growth is inherently not without growing pains. At least, as far as I've been told, I can't say I've experienced a lot of either in my 22 years of living. But my point, however, is this. 2020 has been full of growing pains. And as dire as it seems, therein lies an opportunity to transcend those limitations and create something beautiful. As many analysts have begun to note, we, the graduating class of 2020, are a part of the world's most powerful generation. Let's go out, create, and show them why. So thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2020.